Hey everyone, and welcome to the Noise Podcast, uh, sponsored uh, by Stereo Brain Records and brought to you as po- part of the Noise Podcast Network. And I'm already screwing it up. You may not recognise this voice, and I'm as I'm not the usual host, but I'm here, and my name is Adam. And you may remember me from such podcasts as the Audience Please Podcast, and a guest on a few others. Um, but yeah, it's an honour to be here today to host the Noise Podcast, and. I extend this warm welcome to our guests today, George and Harry from the Stella Two Piece Death Goals. Hello, both. How are you doing? All right. What are you saying? Yeah, we're good. We're good. How you doing? Good. I've never thought of us as a Stella band. I always thought of us more as a Budweiser band. <laughs> oh, oh. cheap there with the crap jokes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The cheesy jokes are already being uh, being wedged in. Um, yeah, it's yeah, it's brilliant to have you have you both on. Um, and you've got an album out soon, which is pretty exciting. Um, out in a couple of weeks, so yeah, let's yeah. let's let's talk about that. Uh, the, the excitement must be building for you both. Um, comes out on May the fifth, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, the I feel like now we're at like the two week mark. The excitement is starting to go into nerves, which I think for the fact that we've sat on this album for. A long time, too long. <laughs> long time. It's you know, it's kind of the the crunch point, I guess you could call it. I'm terrified. <laughs> <laughs> I've never been more scared in my entire life. I I was nervous before the first one, and that had, with all respect to the first one, way less stakes. Yeah, <laughs> this has got way more stakes, personal stakes. But yeah. I, I'm terrified. I'm sure people. I hope people will like it. But mm. I'm I'm. Yeah, looking at these days of apprehension and and terror. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, it must be uh, very, very different. Like uh, releasing that first album on your own, um, doing everything on your own terms, and then prosthetic coming in and picking you up. How did that? Yeah, how did that come about? That um, sort of came out of nowhere. Not soon after the first album came out, you you joined Weird. forces with. Them. Yeah, it was a couple of weeks after we released the album. Then we put out those like live sessions at um, Bookhouse, which were great fun. Um, and then literally like, a couple of weeks after that, we got an email from them being like, oh, we saw the live sessions and those are really cool. We should, let's have a phone call. We had a phone call and basically in that phone, like yeah. Zoom, they were like, oh yeah, yeah so well, like, want to wanna be part of it? But, All right, cool, yeah. Which is very stupid, and we sort of been working with them, sort of since, yeah. um, which is really cool. But yeah, it's a very different um, a time frame and way of doing things. Mm-hmm. Like even the first album, I was so used to not doing anything in terms of like, I oh, sit on this for a little bit, get all like the promo stuff sorted. And I was so used to doing a bit of a we record. Mm, two months later, we'll put the thing out. Yeah, and then we'll go. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's been an exercise in patience, and <laughs> and I'm a monk now. It's great. So something as a band that we don't have is patience. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's been it's been a test, but it's been it's been very cool. Mm. It's very cool. Like we, uh, I think, from the fact that we signed with Prosthetic, basically so quickly after the first record came out, it's given us a lot of time to really. I guess understand the the importance and our necessity to be grateful for being signed in the first place because when we did the whole I guess the touring and the general record cycle of the first record and then and now about to bark on it for the second time so we've kind of we've seen it from the perspective of they've helped us through everything but now it's kind of our turn to be like this is what we can now do for you yeah which is again exciting but also terrifying yeah yeah being yeah. Able to really like with their sort of backing is just cool like yeah having yeah. a name like i think it's sort of associated with or us associated with them more mm-hmm. is is really cool yeah and I, and i suppose um having their their expertise um to <laughs> to uh, give you give you all the tools that you need to um yeah, to get where you are with this album, uh, get that name out there a little bit more. Um, and I suppose as well, something else I wanted to ask is, I suppose as a duo, and obviously so critical just being the two two of you together, this uh, this is the f- 
probably the first time you two have properly sat down and written together for an extended period of time, mm-hmm. I suppose, because obviously yeah, yeah. Uh, George, you came in came in later. Um, yeah, probably not long. I, well, I don't know. Yeah, what was that, what was that like for you this time around, being sort of more settled as a duo and having gone out on the road together? Do you want to go first? You're the one who joined. All right. <laughs> um, it was really cool. Like, we, with the first record coming together through lockdown, I mean, I'd been in the band for a while before we even really started anything with the first one. But we, like, we, did, we hadn't done any shows together. we just been, like, kind of writing a little bit here and there. Then lockdown, lockdown came around and we were like, right we're going to do an album we're just going to see what happens and like you say you know through then spending basically the majority of last year touring and playing shows together like every single month I mean we, we've we been friends for a very long time mm. we live in the same band you live in the same band we do live in the same band you're not wrong you're not wrong we live in the same town um, <laughs> but like it, it really just helped to strengthen our friendship mm. and then it came on to actually doing this record and like you say, being able to sit down in a room and actually write together rather than it being over like Facebook Messenger or WhatsApp. It's it's just been sick. It's yeah. really sick. I feel like we Grog Grog's presence was definitely felt on the first record. For mm. real. There were bits that I would not have written or wouldn't mm. have been inspired to write if it wasn't for Grog's like input and like ideas and all these sort of elements. It was, like a lot of the lyrics and stuff were that's a big like thing what mm. brings to it is really good lyrics and I hate writing lyrics <laughs> um you can tell the songs I write because they're all the lyrics I write because it's like f- eight lines and then Grog's are paragraphs <laughs> yeah. whereas like on this one like yeah there's a lot more sitting now but like, what do we actually want to create yeah there was a lot more back and forth on sending each other stuff editing that sending vocals together and then doing pre-production together where we actually got to yeah a lot of the songs got massively tweaked to there and like finalized and then even then like in classic us form like a week before going to the studio like one of the tunes got completely rewritten oh Um, wow and then like in the studio like things were getting like tweaking lyrics we're like oh that actually you sound better doing that part let's change that like yeah but we were far more comfortable with each other to yeah. sit down and be like, mm, you can do that better, or mm, you could definitely like, okay, you can't play that part like you need to. Let's change that and being a lot more open and honest with each other in certain ways, which I think is great. It's a good, it's a good a way to be as a duo, but also yeah. just as mates. It's good to be able to be critical and not sound like an arsehole being like, well, you play that like shit. So <laughs> it's just easy, you fucking nerd. Let's be like, I think that's a hard part. Okay, yeah, yeah. It, let's do something that works just as well, but you're not going to explode when you play that live or whatever. Yeah, I think a big part of it as well was, and I remember us having a conversation as we were traveling back from recording the first record, where I had this almost like weird kind of, I don't want to call it like imposter syndrome, but I I felt like a real sense of, you know, this is my, this would be my first release with the band. The band, I'd been a fan of Death Girls even before I was in Death Girls. Yeah. And so I was like, I don't want to put something out and people be like, okay, this is George's interpretation of being in Death Girls. And people go, oh, I don't like it. So there was definitely that stress, but I think that, and I mean, even had that like through the first few shows that we did together and like the first bit of touring we did together where it was like trying to not think of it in my head as Harry is Death Girls and I am a part of that band being like actually we, the two of us are Death Girls. Mm-hmm. And I think that, you know, starting A Garden of Dead Flowers, that was just like completely gone. And I think it really helped for both of us definitely in that sense just to be able to push each other a lot more and also just to communicate because I, I think... yeah I, sorry no just back on what you just said there i do feel like it is this is death Girls has never been more of a band than it is now mm. Mm. like all love to every, every other drummer but god knows i there's been a lot of them <laughs> who have been in death Girls, but it's always been a slight thing of like okay cool yeah you're you're the drummer you do bits but there's a lot of me sending like full songs over to being like mm. I kind of written the jump part for you, which obviously is a kind of annoying. And I, in hindsight, 
look back at that and go, yeah, I could have been way more accommodating for some people, but I, I stand by the decisions that I've made. Whereas now, <laughs> it very much feels like, yeah, but even on Horrible, I was like, no, no, no. George is very much as part of this as I am, and that's yeah. really nice. It, there's been so much more input, and then that's even that's ex- expanded even more on this new album where yeah, he was so involved in it, and he was so like, no, 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 no. these lyrics need to be like, well, like, make way more sense and actually have a narrative and like you really push for certain things, which is nice because I've been so used to being like, no, 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 this is my vision, this is what I'm yeah. doing. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. so it's supposed to be balanced like an actual band yeah <laughs> yeah yeah and you can you can definitely hear that um on the new record and spoiler alert to everyone listening the the new record is absolutely fantastic um but you can hear the oh, a real real fucking turn of humor like, spoiler alert. it is shit though <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah but about about five out of ten uh no um it's okay, yeah you can that. <laughs> it's uh you can definitely hear the sort of the widening of influences as well um i mean i've been reading yeah just before we started i was reading through some other interviews um you've both done but listening to it myself there's one of my favorite tracks is um what's it called last night i had a dream about death oh yeah and there's, yeah. And there's little bits and you you did have it before on the previous record but it's more notable there's and i mean i hate to um use the, the band daughters as an example because uh, daughters mm-hmm. but you, the, the little slide guitar bits on that for example um, oh, yeah. uh, are fantastic and more prevalent but then there's the cleaner vocals on the opening track uh i can't remember the name of it off the top of my head endless, endless clones of game show hosts yeah. Half lavish on titles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um yeah like that opening track for example is very different to uh, a lot of the other mm-hmm. tracks on the the previous album um yeah so yeah and also um i suppose yeah george you you must have brought in uh a lot more influences what what's what would you both say uh some new influences like band wise and musically that you think you've brought in on this record i read so only right, because I was answering questions for another interview last night. I was thinking about this. Um, and there was a load of post-punk noise bands yeah. that we really wanted to... And a lot more like melodic, hardcore, or like the sort of like blackened hardcore, like chord stuff. Mm. A lot more like chordal stuff, unless just like fight riffs. Yeah. So like bands like Gilla Band, Mets, Birds and Row, obviously. Yeah. Um, I mean, yeah, daughters are always going to be a little bit there. Obviously, ooh, but like <laughs> musically, that vibe of like that sass yeah. core, like MySpace stuff was really prevalent without wanting to be like a, oh, with like a lot. I hate, we always end up in this t- territory of shit on other bands. I don't really <laughs> like the, the, the MySpace like sound is very big at the moment. Like, yeah, it is. I, I, and we didn't want to just be like, oh, well, the SAS thing's big. So we'll throw a SAS beat on there. And we'll do like some sliding guitar. But I was like, we wrote that song being like, oh, yeah. I've always wanted to do like a two-door cinema club. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Thing. It just happened that it sounds really sassy when you throw a Discord over it. Yeah, 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 exactly. Like, so yeah, I think those ones for for sure, yeah. Um, and then just the usual mix of like Chariot and Every Time I Die and yeah, the eighteen visions, yeah, sort of metal shit. I think there's always going to be, and it, and it's always such a weird thing, I guess, when you kind of whether you're listening to a record that you play on, listen to a record that you don't play on, where you go, oh, I can hear the influence from this, I can hear the influence from this, but. I think when, like, for us anyway, like, when we were in the studio and when we were in the writing Mm. process for it, we weren't listening to, like, anything that was kind of almost purposely not listening to anything that was, like, we should do something like this, we should do something like this. It was more like, oh, this has really stuck with me for something I listened to months ago or something that Mm. I really resonate with the sound. Like, a lot of the post-punk stuff you like harry really introduced me to sort of within the process of making the first record but especially through writing garden Mm. 
and it was a sound and a kind of thing that I'd never really explored. And so when it came down to writing the more post-punky kind of stuff on the record, it, it wasn't like a, oh, this sounds like a bit from a Met song, so we're going to put it in. It was like a, I, we can kind of interpret it in our own weird kind of way. I think also us being a two-piece, we can't copy that stuff well. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so we can go like, okay, cool. We want to have a bit that's reminiscent of a Met song, say, mm -hmm. but we haven't got those sounds or those styles or those pedals or whatever they have. Yeah. So let's take the energy or the vibe of that bit. So like yeah, I looked at the post-punk stuff as being like, let's make songs that are based around a drum groove. So mm -hmm. for example, like Loveless, that was really post-punky. That song doesn't sound post-punky. In yeah. my opinion, yeah, but the drums in that I was purely from a post punk idea of like, oh, yeah, we'll have the drums lead, we'll make it really minimal guitar wise, like post punk often is, yeah. And the, out of that idea, we got Loveless, which has a suicide silence death chord breakdown at the end. <laughs> and it's riff, and like, yeah, yeah, it's more taking influence from ideas and going, okay, well, how do we make that us? How do we take that energy or that um, uses of space or tone or tombra or whatever you want to call it it's yeah. way more wanky than I intended that to be <laughs> no, no, <laughs> but like that sort of stuff instead of just going like a, well that fucking like Jesus Peace riff is really cool let's write a riff that is like that but like we add an extra like beat into it so it sounds a little bit different like yeah, yeah. That, that's yeah. the vibe more taking ideas and making them putting it through the deaf goals lens if you will yeah, yeah. 100% and I mean like we're both massive, massive pop heads. Like, we fucking love Carla Rae Jepsen, like, you know, fucking Beyonce, whoever, like, Charlie XCX. Um, and you can, like, I think listening to our stuff, it, it doesn't sound like a Charlie record. But I listen to it and I go, yeah, but I see where the way that Harry has written something in this section of a song. I, I could listen to that and go, yeah, I know that that is that's a Charlie influence there. Same thing with like, you know, we both love Radiohead. You don't listen to our record and go, that sounds like Radiohead. But in the background, it, it there is so much influence from that band because mm -hmm. it's like, it, it doesn't need to be a, this as blatant sound. as like, yeah, yeah, yeah. as Exit Wounds where we took the weird fishes yeah. and drum beat. <laughs> like, Little things like how we formed lyrics or like ways of doing yeah. melodies and stuff We're like that. We can take a Radiohead esque melody or like idea of a Radiohead melody and put that over this, and that will sound really cool. Well, that I mean, that also brings up a, a I guess a good point of I always find like, and I found especially through writing Garden that actually one of the bigger influences was ourselves because right. it was like because it was. <laughs> Because what's the what's the point? What's the point, right? I love of... you. That is the corniest shit you've ever yeah, I, said in your life. Honestly, <laughs> <That's> amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, it's like for for example, like lyrically, like there's there's stuff on the record which is like a callback to songs that are on that are on like themes and everything that are on horror miserable. There's like it it needs to feel like a, a for me anyway, like I feel like a discography needs to feel like a continuation, otherwise you just get that thing and you know i hate the whole thing of like oh they changed their sound they're selling out because it obviously is not the case but it's like you can tell when a band has gone oh okay this year we're listening to x type of music and now we're going to entirely mm. shift and not actually take into account anything they've done before yeah 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 and i uh, definitely got there's well it's just to bring uh a good example of uh, another band that I know that I love and probably you both love as well. It's like uh, it's only because of thinking about them today is the St. Pierre Snake Invasion. You look at what they've done oh, with yeah, their yeah. with their new singles and their new record, um, which is uh out this week, is they've done exactly that. They love Soul Wax and Meshuggah and having mm -hmm. known Damien for many years, I know how much he, he loves Soul Wax and their interpretation of that on this record is is very obvious but there are it's it's still St. Pierre snake invasion through and through yeah, and, that, and that's really important it, you look at like bands like another favorite band of mine like queens of the stone age um queens of stone age yeah. every single album is different 
but it's still Queens of the Stone Age at the end of the day. Um, and yeah, like you mentioned, like recalling uh, songs from previous albums, like Queens of the Stone Age, for example, they they use lyrics uh like repeated lyrics over multiple mm-hmm. albums um yeah. and that that tie, that tie everything in together so it might be a stone rock album and then uh essentially a pop rock album yeah but there's yeah. but there's but there's a there's a tie in between so yeah it's really it's really good to to hear that you've really thought about that as well hmm. 100%, 100%. Yeah. So um continuing on, on, on the album, obviously the, the themes uh, of the lyrics and um of the imagery you've been using in the in the videos, it, it's obviously all around the LGBTQIA plus community and um it's obviously very important, very close to both your hearts. Um just wanted to talk a bit ar- around that and um yeah, um the, yeah, I suppose the themes are, um, um, and the lyrics are around that. Is there, is there only been any specific focuses within these songs and that community? I think so. We the first album we had, we touched briefly on it. It was the first time a lot both of us were right writing about our own queerness, and mm. the first time it sort of come up in our songwriting, um, and that was great, and that felt very needed and necessary at the time Mm -hmm. um and then going into this record there was a far more deliberate and intentional focus on Mm -hmm. our queerness our identity just being two queer individuals Mm -hmm. um and yeah we just happened to write loads of stuff where we're like this is what we want to write about and it just like it wasn't a forced thing like well, we probably should like. Oh, that was a good gimmick. We like. We'll do some this with that. Like, yeah. it just happened that it became more of a thing. We spoke more about it last on tour. Like, we hung. Like, we stayed at more queer people's houses. Like, mm-hmm. it, we got more involved in that. Obviously, we're part of that community anyway. But we were far more involved in it than and are vocally involved in it. Yeah, than we probably had been ever. Um, so when it came, we just started writing more about it. And yes. Like a lot of these songs are quite bleak. Like the first al- song of the album is literally a song about dysphoria and gender identity and all that sort of stuff. Mm. And you know, the guillotine are a constant and oppressive uh, quasi extermination of our community that we are facing every day um, and increasingly violently so. Um, but then songs like Faux Macho are about the sort of joy we've experienced yeah. things and celebrating that sort of community pansy as much as it's, it's a sad gay love song. Who's a sad gay love song yeah. on a <laughs> chaotic hardcore record? But we wrote one and like, I love that record so much. And that that song especially was like, this, you were saying about writing together for the first time. That was the first time we sort of sat down when we demoed that track, sat in the same room and went, what do we want to write this song about? And I sort of mentioned just this like idea I had, like how I disappear for long walks, and then I'd I'd happen to walk into a person I was somewhat talking to. Then we go into the woods <laughs> and we'd like have a little kiss and all that stuff because he wasn't allowed to sort of do that at his parents' house. And I mean, not, my parents don't care, but um, and Greg was like, oh, I literally had the exact, exact same experience. I was yeah. like, oh, work, that's what like that song and that was the first time we sort of like a had this beautiful little connection of like oh yeah cool we should definitely be writing more songs yeah, about that and 100 percent like i'm i'm really glad we have it's definitely a, a a key focus on this album um without it obviously without making it being like well this is the gay album yeah like it, it just happens we're we're queer bad we're gonna write about and thoughts and stuff but as well as that there's other stuff on the album like yeah stop trying to kill trans people anyone who's <laughs> listening stop it stop it now you fucking pieces of shit I think that there's such a fine line between like trying to commercialize something like queerness and actually doing it 
from the heart because you give a shit and it's something that's important to you. And I think that's something that was so like we thought about so much writing the record mm. because it was like, you know, I don't I don't want to see that band where it's like, like you say, like, oh, that's the band, that's the gay band that talk about, you know, gay shit. And it's like, because we we, you know, on future records, it will I think it'll always be there, but it might not be the focus the focus yes yeah. and so it's like well if we have a chance to talk about it now and it's something that we want to talk about now we're gonna do it mm. and it might i guess from setting it up as well on the first it's kind of like people who are getting into the band now know what they're in for mm. like it's not going to be a shock to people when they listen to the album and go Oh, this is about being queer because we we you know we're very vocal about it, and that be it shows whether it be online, whether it be through the first record. Like I think we've just it, it's it's so important to our everyday life that it's like why not make a record about it? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And yeah, like um, like you say, like the next re- well, you can never predict the future, but the next record you might want to focus on something else in in your own personal lives or um that's not necessarily around um the queer community um but also yeah it is it's so so important to uh, uh, especially coming from uh, like a straight person it's i think it's important for you both to put your stamp down now because like you say mm-hmm. you you want people to be aware of of what you're about because ultimately there are still a lot of horrible people out there in the in the metal and hardcore world that will will... yeah we know not to name any names of any uh publications publications. yeah 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 the the, the facebook comments uh in in certain yeah but Mm -hmm. um yeah it's going to be uh really really important this this record coming out and uh especially for for a lot of other people that may not have come out as well um mm-hmm. and we had a lot of like comments on that as well from like shows which is really lovely i will say like yeah but a lot of people coming up being at which is ridiculous because we're fucking nobody um but people come up being like oh yeah you're like this like first the first album that's really like been a huge thing for me like helping me accept like who i am and blah 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 blah, which is completely fucking wild or like there was a guy in bristol whose name i've forgotten which is terrible but he basically came up he was a 40 year old guy and he was like hearing you guys talk about what you're talking about and re- representing what you're representing is so big because like i was a little gay like kid like when i like in 2002 or whatever going to hardcore shows and there was no one no one would like represent who we mm. were. I was terrified the whole time. I'd get the shit kicked out of me. And now you guys are here, being so vocal with no fear of what anyone's going to say. Like mm-hmm. that's that's like thank you. That's massively important. That was like a huge thing. Being like this, there's clearly people here who care and are somewhat affected yeah. by what we've got to say, 100%. which is absolutely comical in some ways, and also massively like endearing and lovely. Yeah. It's nice to know that some people care enough where our silly little songs are making an impact on them yeah yeah definitely um so talking about playing live um obviously really really important uh for us to talk about is you're about to go out on tour um to support this album which is really really exciting and i know i'm buzzed to see you guys play in uh london um just down the road and you cross in um everyone should go um You've just been announced, well, not recently, but uh, you've been announced to play ATG, which must be on yeah. the bucket, bucket list for you both. Um, did you did you ever think that would ever happen? Um, and also, who, 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 who are you buzzing to to see this year? Because as ever, it's such a stacked lineup. And I know, I know, there's one band that uh, George and I were talking about very recently. Yeah. That I went to see. I am. Um... Yeah, uh, uh, it's I a bu- guess... it's a bucket list event like festival for real. Hundred percent. Like we 100%. Uh, we never. Thought, I had literally bought tickets to it anyway because I was I can't miss. I've missed a lot of arc tangents 
Oh. Which is ridiculous, and I've regretted it. Yeah, I was like, I have to go because it's so good. And then we got the email for it. I was like, ah, oh, sick, even better. And it's fuck. It. I mean, obviously, Sunbaver, Death Heaven, so, Sunbaver in full. Is in full, Urge. I got obviously my codename is Milo. Yeah, you're seeing like I remember even Adam, you and I were talking about this like a couple weeks ago. Um. Your code name is Milo being like one of my absolute favorite, favorite bands. Yeah. Waiting years and years for them to get back together. And then we got announced for ATG and it was like, and then I missed the reunion shows that you went to <laughs> and I was absolutely it. And then they did like the final announcement. And I remember like looking on my phone, just like, Scanning through everything, definitely sporting their logo and like trying not to scream. <laughs> and being like, this is, this is, I was like sat at work, like basically pretending to do work. And I was like, you know, skimming through it. And oh, it's just, just amazing. I mean, them, uh, Sunbaver is my favorite record. So that's yeah, going to be I'm, absolutely I'm nuts. pulling up the lineup so I can get a good, yeah, I've, I've got a who's on it. I've got it in front of me, so uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, converge. I mean, that, that... Yeah, converge. Stupid. Empire State bastard. Hysterical. <laughs> Pig some seven sick. Uh, Russian circle sick. Uh, chat pile. Fucking ridiculous. Chinese football. Who are sick. Birds and Row, which is one of my favorite bands ever. That last album was nuts. Short hands are amazing. Grief ritual are sick. Uh, Mountain caller are sick. Party of God are yeah. sick. Wallowing are. Um, Swans, that'll be funny. Um, the ocean, <laughs> sixty-eight are. I mean, Josh Gogan is literally one of my favorite like vocalists uh, of all time. We've, six, we've sixty-eight. Been been a, a, yeah, sixty-eight's been a bucket list band for me, and the fact that they're playing yeah. portals. Also, everyone go to portals. Yeah, 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 but yeah. They're playing portals, and this is is mad. I'd never thought I'd I, see them. I, I saw them opening for Every Time I Die, and it oh. was the most ridiculous shit I've ever seen. Um, Click Drip, Dawn Raid, Helpless, Hidden Mothers, like it's Homies Fest, like it's the actual yeah, Homies the Fest. Yeah, the day we're yeah. playing the fucking Friday Homies Fest. I mean, Devin Townsend, Eagle, Over a Little Massey, uh, uh, Fall of Troy, Callous Dow Boys, like oh, Callous Dow Boys fucking, as well. Yeah, Dow, Dow Boys is gonna be a fucking bloodbath. I'm gonna act <laughs> goofy, like it. it that... The lineup is like they've done such a fucking stellar job, and they always do a stellar job. It's something for fucking yeah. everyone. See, that's the thing. Like, like I've been, great. I've been going to a tangent for Time. years now. Like the first year I went, I want to say maybe twenty six, perhaps the Godspeed year. And oh I've yeah, that's, going... that's the same year as me. Yeah, the Dillinger Godspeed. Yeah, year. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's just like I just absolutely love that festival. So. For us being on it is just is just nuts. I mean, I that's to the, really not be hungover. Yeah, that's the <laughs> that's the thing of like playing. I'm watching, we're watching Converge, and then we're playing the next day. I'm gonna be battered. <laughs> it's gonna be awful. I I I don't blame you. That Thursday is ridiculously it's stacked. Wild. I'm actually and, and then being able to last until Callous Dow Boys on that last day um, is gonna be yeah, it's gonna be a mad one. The Saturday is gonna be my day of rest. I have rest. <laughs> Good absolutely luck. Not. Absolutely not. Like in my in my little tent coffin. <laughs> I was I was like that. Uh, I was like that last year. I mean, yeah, same thing. I've been going to Arc Tangent uh, since that third year, and like last year, the Armed were playing. Of course, the Armed. Oh, were yeah, yeah. The, the the Armed were playing on the last day, and I was like, I think I might die. And I, I remember leaving that set, and I had to go and have a shower because I was just like, yeah. I was, I was done. I was done. I can't remember yeah. who, can't remember who played on the last night after them. It was, it was only a couple more bands I watched, and I was, I just had to have a sit down for like two yeah, hours. The yeah. arm yeah, will do that to you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and, <laughs> and almost getting killed by a guitar, which is a, a whole other story. Uh, when he. Uh, when he launched, the, um, one of the members launched the uh, guitar into the air and it almost landed on my head. That was fun. <laughs> Getting killed on the show. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 
You win the math call, you get killed at the arm show. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, um, yeah, just to give everyone a, a rundown, where, where are you both playing on this uh, tour and where can people catch you? We are playing. Let me get the poster up. Skibbity beep beep beep. So we're playing London, New Cross on the 5th of May. So that's album launch day. Uh, pre-order the album. For love of God, pre-order the album. Please pre-order the album. Please, please, <laughs> please pre-order the album. Um, then we're playing Costas Rights in Bristol, uh, Cardiff on the 10th, Birmingham, Liverpool, Leeds, Newcastle, Glasgow, Nottingham, Brighton. So it's nice. a nice little yeah. trek with Vicarage coming on with us for the whole ride, who are wicked. They're yeah. like uh, Gaza with deathcore vocals. They're ridiculous. They like you will you will love them. They are very. <laughs> do, you, do you know what? Do you know what? I've yet to check them out. So after this, I will be going to listen to them. That's for sure. So, so we yeah. so we saw them. We played a festival in Manchester, and it was a long day of a lot of bands, and they were like three or four bands on before us. Yeah, um, we were headlining. <laughs> um, um, but I remember them like the first song starting and us doing like that dramatic like slow turn around be like gee fucking Christ <laughs> like they they were leagues above mm-hmm. everyone there and they're gonna fucking show us up every night we've made yeah. a terrible mistake <laughs> um, they are fucking wicked they're, they're yeah. fucking awesome so that's gonna be a really good fun and also playing some places we've never played before we've got the supports like we finally today got all the like supports like finally sorted for every show and there's loads of fucking really cool bands playing with us yeah um so yeah buy a ticket it's in the links it's in the bios it's on the websites yeah yeah defo yeah Uh, yeah come to new crossing yeah candescent ad as well uh the new crossing as well yeah Uh, shooting daggers Oh, of course, yeah. I forgot about shooting daggers. Yeah, my icons. Yeah, <laughs> the legends, the they hardest are. working fans ever. They're the best. Yeah, absolutely sick. Um, so we were joking uh, before we before we started recording proper. So I obviously people won't be able to see this. I am wearing an off menu uh, t shirt. Um, so we were joking about uh, uh, favorite food to eat. So what what are you both going to be eating on tour? <laughs> well, the real answer is I will be eating uh, cake and only cake, <laughs> cheap cakes from convenience stores because they're cheap and they keep me energized. Um, I will eat. <sighs> I say this like it's it's not the inevitable. I will basically only eat chicken nuggets. Uh, as a band, that is all we actually eat. That's our right. When, when we <laughs> the thing is like we'll we'll like we've been on tours before. Like we'll go to the services, and I'll like you know, I'll go back out to the car or whatever, and Harry will be there with like you know those like uh, the like the crispy is it crispy cream crispy cream like yeah. the oh. donuts where there's yeah well donuts in a box. Like, when did you get that? That's my snacky snack, bro. That's my snacky <laughs> snack. What, all 12 have, of them? I'm, all 12. You space them out over the day. So you have two in the car, <laughs> two before you go on, so you get a sugar boost, and then two before bed, so you go into a, like a sugar coma, then you sleep, then two for breakfast. I... And then you have two more for the car. Like, it works wow. out economically. It works out very well for a snack, like I, I do. I to watch. But like I don't know, we'll, we'll eat vegetables as well. I promise we won't eat vegetables <laughs> at all. I, 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 th- I, th- I think you need to die. I think you need a diabetes check. If anything, I do. I'm fucked. I'm absolutely fucked. There's no way I don't have it. Um, I'm in trouble. I am in trouble. It's terrifying. Like it's actually terrifying. I love you, but you. like, <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I don't know. We'll, we'll eat some. We'll eat some good stuff. Hopefully, I think there's we've got like a permanent base for a couple of days so we'll i'll make like we'll make a nice little stir fry or something Ooh. we'll do some home cooking nice yeah and then i think i've seen a lot of the like a lot of writers are like oh, we'll buy some pizzas so i guess a lot of like fucking pizza brother we're gonna, we're gonna eat get bread and hummus yeah we need to pull waste time beer we're gonna be drink, <laughs> drinking beers and eating pizza for nine days straight <laughs> and then I- 
I, I, th I think this is a call for help for the for the listeners to bring some healthy food to uh, to yeah, the boat really on like tour, carrots, like a fruit a fruit pot or something, a watermelon. Okay, I will yeah. personally, I will personally ensure that anyone is ever satisfied. <laughs> and I'm used to get out in the pit. Yeah. <laughs> you bring me vegetables, I'm beating the shit out of you. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I only went bits in. Yeah, I was gonna food. say like if it's got like chocolate on it. Yeah, or something, you fucking love that. Strawberries and chocolate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So delicious. So, so, <laughs> so just, bring us just, twenty chicken nuggets for every show. <laughs> so, so just before we uh, just before we finish up, um, uh, just wanna. Um, make sure everyone knows where uh, you said about pre-ordering the record. When's the record out again, uh, and where can people buy it? The fifth of May, the fifth of May, the fifth of May, <laughs> Friday, the fifth. Friday, the fifth of May. Available at all good our uh, Bandcamp um, and <laughs> aesthetic. I think their website. You can pre-order yeah. on there. Yeah, you can get it. All the links are on uh, our website, which is www deathgoals.com secured that domain mama <laughs> yeah yeah we'd be paying for that motherfucker we'd be paying for that motherfucker domain <laughs> yeah um, um yeah buy a record a buy a record to pay for the domain that's for sure yeah trust exactly that's literally exactly that's, that, that's the tagline for the whole tour um but we'll also have vinyl and cds and merch and everything on the tour hell yeah so come buy a record from me so i can look you in the, the eyes and thank you I will, um, I will look away. Our, our, <laughs> so here's the exclusive. Our copies of the vinyl will come with a special bonus. Ooh. Well, the ones at the shows, because I've yet to... The ones at the shows have a special bonus that I have secured personally. Oh, wow. Which sounds like <laughs> than I meant it sound. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a nice little thing in it that I've added on. Um, I've scratched every one of them. Yeah. Is, is, every one it, of them is broken. They're all snapped. Is, 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 it it a crispy, is, is it a Krispy Kreme donut? Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I wedged a Krispy Kreme into each, one, into each seat one. I rammed it in. You've got jam all over it. It's a splatter. That's a literal splatter vinyl. Oh. Yeah. It's, it's, the, it's the donut there splatter. Go. There you go. Donut splatter, come on! That's oh, the next present. That's it. You need that's to be paid. You need to pay me for that idea, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. In we, donuts. In okay. donuts, yeah. <laughs> What's your favorite Krispy? Um. Oh yeah, favorite Krispy Kreme. That's a good question. Um. What's like the? Uh, oh god, I can't remember the name of it. Like the brown one with like a caramelly sort of filling. That's that's, yeah, that's my, my favorite. favorite too. Yeah. Yeah. What about you? What about your favorite? What about your favorite Krispy Kremes? Go on, quickly to finish off the pod. Uh, all of them. I am not prejudiced. <laughs> I will like. I will manage about half of one of the like. You'll look at one and, and get twitchy. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like the the sugar glaze ones or whatever, like the bog standard. Like, like, yeah, uh -huh. ready salted ones. Like, <laughs> yeah. Ready salted. Like, that, I'll have half of that, and I will not sleep for about four days. So that, fair, fair. This is um, why we we're so, so well the <laughs> dynamic because we could be more different as human beings, <laughs> and that's why we're beautiful. That's why you should pre-order our album. Yes. We are truly giving you the the ah oh, fucked it oh fuck it roll the tape <laughs> and, <laughs> roll the tape. <laughs> and yeah and on that bombshell i think that's the 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 perfect place to uh to finish the interview thank you so much for for coming on you two um uh you can thank find you. some right. this is great you can find the no noise podcast wherever you can uh stream watch your podcasts you'll find us on socials at at noise podcast network as well as the website via at noise uk um some great uh album live reviews and photos up on uh noise.co.uk including my recent review of the say ps leak invasion album which is absolutely bangers um follow like and subscribe and comment if you please um and also just shout out to 
Audience Please podcast, my podcast, which doesn't actually exist anymore, but it's still out there. Oh, excuse me. Oh, God, I just ended that well, didn't I? Uh, the Audience Please podcast. Um, I was lucky enough to interview various bands over, over the years uh, about their favourite gigs played and been to from the members, likes of the members of Idols, Red Fang, Goddamn and many more. So if you like that kind of thing, go and check that out as well. Uh, thanks again to uh, Harry and George for joining me. Say bye, you guys. Bye, bye you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, have a great day, everyone. And uh, enjoy the, I hope you've enjoyed the episode. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Big up noise. <laughs> <laughs>